In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, please be seated. I am the bread of life, he said, who, who follows me, partakes of me, shall not die, but shall have everlasting life. He also said, Go out ye therefore and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And so to fulfill this commandment, to partake of the bread of life, and to, as he tells us, to go out into the world and baptize, we are baptizing today. And we are entering into a state of life where life as you know it will change. If you have not been baptized, and you should get baptized, it's an essential element of Christianity. And so being baptized today, you will forever be changed. What is baptism? Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River by John. And when he was baptized in the Jordan River by John, there, a dove came and descended over Jesus, John saw it. They heard a voice from heaven that said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And so you had manifested right there in the Jordan River the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the first time manifested to God to, to people as the Holy Trinity. The baptism of going into the water and coming up is a baptism of death and resurrection. We enter into the water as one person and we rise up out of the water as another person. A person that has been purified. You can only say these gifts are for the holy and purified. Those who have been baptized are the ones who receive the body and blood of Christ because they follow him, they believe him, and they have eternal life. They have made stated so publicly. And they have entered into the waters of baptism, which is our waters of rejuvenation. You go in and you rise up purified. The water itself is purified. We, are the, we uh, perform an exorcism on each person that's being baptized and on the water itself. So that there is nothing evil in it, nothing of darkness, nothing of the works of Satan, nothing, no contamination, nothing. It's pure. And you are pure. You are purified before God. What happens to us? Do we feel it? Some people feel it. A lot of people feel this. I never knew it was like this. Some people feel it when it's the unction of the Holy Spirit. Well, whether you feel it or not, it's a spiritual change that unlocks and whole trans-dimensional aspects of reality. Jesus is God. God is always everywhere and filling all things. Jesus says, My Father is the vine grower. I am the vine. You are the branches. And so, to be grafted into this family of Followers of Jesus. He says, This is how you do the works of God. Believe in me whom God has sent. And greater works than I do shall you do in my name. This is what the purpose of baptism is. Is to open the door. It's unlocked. The keys to heaven are heaven is unlocked to you, and you will experience and your life will be in both worlds at the same time. You shall be in this world but not of it any longer once you are baptized. The baptism of repentance is the baptism of John. The baptism of Jesus went into himself and rose again on behalf of humanity so that he as a fully human being, fully Son of God, would show us the way. And as he does, we also do. And as the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus, 
And the voice that came out of heaven said, This is my beloved son. So once we go up, come up out of the waters of baptism, we are then immediately chrismated with the oil of the Holy Spirit and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then you can call yourself a transdimensional, multifaceted spiritual being, a son or daughter of the light. And you are now at access, free access. There's no more no stepping stone. You are in. And because you are in, you will never be out. It is an acceptance by God of your statement of faith. I believe in you. I believe in the Father. I believe in the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the, in the resurrection of the dead. I believe in the Holy Church, which is the body of Christ. I believe in these things. Statement of faith. And people turn around and they face the other direction. Do you renounce Satan and all his minions? Yes, I spit on him. Totally. Spit. And so the, the embracing of God and the turning from evil to do good is what is, in, is entailed into this. It's not a ceremony. It's not ceremonial. It is transworldly. It is otherworldly and thisworldly at the same time. Things we do in this world echo into eternity. And your statement of faith echoes into eternity. And our acceptance of He who has revealed Himself, revelation of God to man, is unto eternity. For you. It is your inheritance. It is something you should choose. Each person, Jesus died for all of our sins, that's right. That we all have the right to choose to follow him. And as we choose to follow him, then these gifts open up. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are manifested within us as we need them. If you need to speak other languages so people can understand you, you will be given a gift of tongues. A gift of tongues is speaking divinely through you. Not badly on you, by the way. Our people have that in their old mix up. That's in order to start babbling. Everybody stands in the room and looks at them, look, what? I received the gift of tongues one time. I was in Bosnia. I was sitting on a park bench taking a break. And a bus pulled up of tourists. And the tourist saw a monk sitting on a bench and he said, Oh, the monk's sitting on a bench, let's go talk to him. So they came over and they were people. They, they were Italians, they were French, they were from Spain, they were from Ireland, they were from England. But they said, Father, teach us about the Holy Spirit. And I started talking to them about the Holy Spirit. And they all understood me because I was speaking Italian to the Italians and French to the French. I was speaking Irish to the Irish. And they understood me. You would talk to an Irish person who lived here, it it's hard to understand them. But so they understood exactly what I was saying, and they got the message. A man from Ireland happened to be a priest. And he said to me, we have problems in our land. I said, I've heard. The Protestants hate the Catholics. We have to come up with a way to solve this because it's unholy. I said, indeed, it is unholy. He says, how can we invoke the Holy Spirit upon this problem? I said, you're asking me. We've had this war going on for 400 years now. Why do you want me to solve it for you? 
yes, Father, if you're able. I said, very well. In your church, which is a Catholic church, got it. I said, do you have a fund for those people who cannot pay their heating bill? I do. Take your fund from your heating bill. People who can't pay your heating bills, take over the thoughts and churches so this is for your people who can't pay your heating bills. Ah, they would never accept it. Then leave it there, come back next month with another one. Keep doing it. He says, All right, Father, I'll give it a try. You know, I got a letter from him. He says, Holy Father, I want to tell you that I did this. I did exactly as you instructed. We had to our heating bill. People that couldn't pay our heating bill and our electric bill and whatever bills they had, we have a fund. And I took it over to the Protestants. And I said, here, this be from our, from our parishioners who sacrificed for you. Wouldn't you know it? But two months later, the minister, the Protestant minister came over and we turned the favor. He said, this is from our poor, for your poor. He said, don't you know that they sacrificed for us as we sacrificed for them? And now, you know, we're having a picnic. We're having a dinner. And we're playing soccer. And their team is playing our team. And the kids are playing together. And don't you know we have peace? So the gift of the Holy Spirit was not speak, just speaking in different languages, but it was being able to invoke the Holy Spirit to come to a solution whereby people can get along. People who had historic hatred for each other. I mean, blowing up each other's schools. Hatred. Hatred 
and annihilation and evil. Someone said to me, Father, you speak to us. And so I said, Do you see that you didn't cause this war? Did you see that you are not able to cure it? Were you able to end the war? No. Are you able to cope with the war? The effects of the war? I feel your pain. Do you see that this person over here is in pain? Just as you are in pain? And that you are both victims of these, of these crimes of hatred? Do you think it is their fault that she had to shoot her parents? Do you think it's your fault that she put your children in the minefield? Do you think it was their fault? No. Do you see that the suffering is, in, is endemic with both of you? All of you have suffered at the hands of this evil. And so when does the evil stop? It stops here and now. And what can you say? Can you look at this woman over here and say, I love you. In the name of God, I forgive you. And they did. Every one of them did that. They said that. And you can feel it. I still feel it. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are spiritual powers. Powers that go on into infinity. And by your baptism, you have access to those powers. Why? Because of your faith. Because he says anything you ask in my name, I will do it. Because you believe, and because you have this faith, you can forgive each other one's sins. And this I command you, love one another as I love you. And so, this is what we're doing this morning, when we're doing this baptism. This is what baptism is. It is this entry into, it is not a ceremony to be in the right Jesus Club. It is a access to heaven on earth. And it is your, an opportunity given to us because Jesus died on the cross, rose again from the dead, and ascended to heaven, and the Holy Spirit came out of the cross. And here we are. Keeping it going. One intact teaching, one generation to the next. And this is how it is. So I'm thankful that you are here. I'm expecting some others to arrive. And when they come, we're going to go out there after this Mass, and we're going to go and we're going to baptize people. And if you have not been baptized in this faith, then I encourage you to do it. I encourage you to make a choice. I encourage you to experience this one for all so that all might be.